Hi, this is Brad Linder with Linux Smartphones and a PinePhone running SXMO, which is simple X mobile user interface and suite of applications running on top of post market OS. So uh, SXMO is not, in fact, a full fledged operating system. Instead, it's a set of tools designed to offer a simple uh, user experience that runs on top of post market OS or theoretically other operating systems. And when I say simple, I don't necessarily mean user-friendly because it's sort of geeky and takes a lot of memorization. You navigate using a combination of gestures uh, like swipes and button presses like the power and volume buttons to, to get around. And so I'll show you sort of how that works in a quick overview. Uh, it's nice because it is very lightweight. Uh, the whole system image is only about 230 megabytes. It's running off an SD card and it's one of the faster operating systems I've used on the Pine phone even though the Pine phone is a $150 phone or this version is a $200 version with relatively low power hardware, SXMO runs reasonably well on this hardware. But it also, it, uh, it doesn't really look like the Ubuntu Touch Lomiri user interface or the KDE Plasma Mobile or the Fosh phone shell user interface. It doesn't look like the UIs that are really designed for touchscreen devices as if they were Android or iOS. So it takes a little getting used to. This is version uh, 1.3.0, which was released recently, and it has a couple of interesting upgrades and bug fixes. Uh, better sleep performance, uh, should be able to receive uh, phone calls in sleep mode, it should uh, save power when its screen is locked and so forth, and, the, uh, and I'm not really going to show you much of that because going into sleep could be a little bit finicky and I don't have a SIM card, so I'm not going to do phone calls. But the menus also have been updated so that we've got little icons for most of the different options in the menus. And instead of registering when you put your finger on the screen, it now registers when you take it off. And that makes it easier to do things like make sure that you're on the right item. But it's a little bit faster to use it with your fingers than it would be to do the same thing using the volume buttons and the power buttons. So uh, that is a nice little upgrade. The overall system menu gives you access to apps, files, phone dialer, text messages. And just to show you how geeky this is, this is how you would send a text message. You would just type it in there and then click the send as text button. Um, same thing for dialing a phone number. You would just type it in and then uh, d dial it that way. You don't have a sort of more uh, touchscreen friendly user interface for all of that. And in terms of applications, it comes pre-installed with a couple of different web browsers, including Surf, NetSurf, and Firefox. I'm going to go ahead and show you NetSurf just because it loads really quickly. Um, and when I want to bring up the keyboard, I have to press the power button to do that. It doesn't happen automatically. So while this is super fast, I would say, in terms of responsiveness, uh, one thing it is not is uh, quite as user-friendly as some other mobile um, web browsers because I can't really navigate using my finger quite the same way I'm used to. Uh, instead, I have to use this scroller here on the side. But you can see it is really pretty fast. Make the keyboard go away there. And, you know, pages load reasonably quickly, and I can navigate relatively quickly. Now, when I swipe down from the top in previous screens from the home screen, you saw the system menu. From here, we'll get an application-specific menu. So we've got URL, zoom, uh, history, and so on. So I can zoom in and zoom out. And that's just a quick look at NetSurf, which is one of multiple applications that run on this device. Uh, you can also do side-by-side -side applications. So I just double-tapped the power button and brought up a terminal. I'm going to tap it once and do a top command. So now you can see we've got system resources running in one window and a web browser in the other. And because screen rotation is or should be supported, there we go, um, you can change how that view works. Now, if I'd rather see them side by side in landscape mode, then I need to... Uh, that just flips them. There we go. I need to press the down button to change the layout. Volume down goes up and down, just view one, view them side by side, or a double tap flips the location. So you can see it can take a little getting used to getting that right. I'm going to keep this plugged in so that the battery doesn't die. 
Uh, there's also a couple of different ways that you can kill applications. So I can choose the one I want to close and press and hold the power button. Or from here, I can use two fingers and swipe down to the bottom of the screen, which normally should close it, but I wonder if it's because it's running, it's not going to do that. So let's go ahead and control C, try that again. No. Well, fortunately, it's a terminal, so I can also just type exit. There's also a couple of other pre-installed apps. We've got a Calculator, which, there we go. That's how you close it, by swiping to the bottom. Um, and let's do Firefox, which is one of the more resource-intensive uh, applications that are on here, but it's also one of more of the touchscreen-friendly applications. So as we're waiting for that to load, there we go. We've got Firefox. And this time, I think scrolling is maybe a little bit more jittery, but it does support sort of touch-based navigation and pinch to zoom and so forth. It just takes a little bit longer to get stuff done. Uh, you can load multiple applications at once. So from here, let's go to the system menu, apps. Let's bring that calculator back up again. Let's go back to the system menu, apps. Let's bring up a terminal. So you can see now we've got three different applications running side by side. And then bring up the keyboard, and it's really one of the geekiest things that you're likely to see on a, on a phone anytime soon. Uh, again, you know. I could make a phone call and bring up more menus. Um, we do get application-specific menus. So if I'm in the web browser, uh, when I bring up the menu, we've got... Um, oh, apparently the browser wasn't in focus. The terminal was. So we've got type complete, copy complete, uh, paste, zoom, and so forth. Close the menu. Let's just close these two applications. And now when I bring up menu, we've got URL, new tab, new window, zoom, and so forth. Uh, just to go over real quickly the different things that you can do. One tap brings up the keyboard, makes it go away. Two taps brings up the terminal. Three taps, three taps brings up the Surf web browser, which is an even lighter weight uh, web browser. It's going to take a second to load there, but uh, once it done, you'll see DuckDuckGo. Uh, volume down changes the layout of your side-by-side -side apps. And again, I can switch to a different virtual desktop if I wanted to create a whole different setup while keeping this one intact. Uh, so that was one volume down. Volume down twice changes where different things are placed in your stack. And then three taps, which I honestly find hard to register or just a press and hold, will kill the current application. Tap once up launches application-specific context menus from any screen that has an application open. Double tap, and you get your global system menu. So again, we've got access to the apps, file dialer texts, uh, also configuration. So you can change your screen brightness, uh, modem info. You can also adjust auto rotation and uh, Turn on the flashlight if you wanted to. So you can see the flashlight is on, off, on, off. Uh, and then three taps or tap and hold locks the screen, which I've not had a ton of success with, so I'm not going to necessarily show that to you right now. So uh, overall, that is an overview of Simple X Mobile, a uh, collection of simple but not necessarily intuitive applications that come preloaded. Uh, since this is running on PostMarket OS, it should support other third-party applications, I think, uh, but I haven't really experimented with installing those. But out of the box, you've got terminal, you've got a web browser, you've got uh, support for phone calls and text messages, window management, on-screen keyboard for typing, um, and it is lightweight and, and works reasonably quickly. So there are a lot of things to like about it, but it is also just a little bit more finicky and definitely a lot geekier than your typical smartphone operating system in 2021. So uh, I don't know that it's for everybody, but it does show that there are many ways to think about how you can use uh, Linux 
based operating systems on a smartphone or tablet or mobile device like this. So uh, you can find download links and more information, uh, links to the documentation for SXMO at, uh, the, by reading the uh, description notes of this video. And you can head on over to Linux Smartphones for more information about the PinePhone, about SXMO, and about PostMarket OS, and all sorts of other operating systems that are available for Linux phones. Uh, this is Brad Linder with LinuxSmartphones.com.